Lions Gate. Hi folks, Elaine Marilakos Edelson with Astrology Mojo. I want to help you get your mojo back. Is this on? Is this thing on? Uh, thank you for joining me in my Jane Austen background. Jane, Mr. Darcy, come for a visit. Um, yeah, we have a big 12 days on the first day of Lion's Gate. Uh, if you don't know me, you may not know that I say that the planets in astrology don't do anything to you, that we live in a cooperation. Yeah. Um, because when the planets make a move, you feel that. When you make a move, it's reflected by way of aspects and angles in astrology. Please hear that. Please understand that planets are not doing things to you. But yet, just like... And of course, the sun and the moon are not planets. They are bodies, uh, celestial bodies that we feel. We have an integral relationship to those. But still, all the planets that are spinning in our heavens um, create a vibration. And we are vibrational beings. We create a frequency. They have a frequency. And that frequency of abundance is where we're headed. And when the lion's gate comes around, I'm going to be talking about this at length. I have my notes and um, come join me, say hello, please comment, thumbs up, uh, share, and if you're on YouTube, subscribe. Uh, you may be watching this live or in a uh, replay. Either way, a lot of this information is evergreen. And it's going to relate to how you choose, uh, period, <laughs> how you choose. <laughs> Are you reactionary? Are you proactive? So as I settle myself in for the long night uh, of 8-8, eight, eight, uh, the Lion's Gate portal has to do with the sun being at 16 degrees, very briefly, I'm not going to do too much tech talk, but when the sun is 16 degrees of Leo, which we are coming up on on August 8th, as it does every year, and of course, the energy doesn't stop or start on a dime. So it's not just August 8th. We've been in it for weeks and it will continue through approximately the 13th or 14th, depending on the degrees in your chart. Um, when the star Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S, let's get serious. When the star Sirius um, rises and aligns with our sun and planet and it's it creates a portal. Um, the Egyptians, thousands of years ago and all the way through now, have had this relationship to Sirius where the pyramids aligned literally with uh, Sirius. And it was known as um, a goddess-type energy or um, the great harmonizer because the frequency would be fine-tuned and uplifted. So just like if you had an AM or FM radio, remember those? And you are turning it, you're turning the dial, you're trying to find something, and it's like static, and the weather, and you tune into a tone, a station, a sound, a frequency, a song, that resonates with your entire person. <gasps> you turn up the volume and you go, yes, yes. I feel inspired. I, I feel excited. I feel something I don't know what to call it. I feel overwhelmed. I, so the vibration, and I've got some, I have some, some images to go along. So come say hello to me. We're talking about the Lion's Gate portal, 8 8, and how you can utilize this energy and this frequency to download new codes, uh, heal, healing vibrations, um, move some energy that's been stagnant or stuck, 
Now, on one level, someone might be saying, oh, you know, I can't, I've tried so hard to lose the weight. You know, I just can't. And then suddenly this week, suddenly, Susan, uh, you know, suddenly this week, you get an email, a phone call, a dream, a feeling, a sensation, whether it be more on the positive or the negative side, we don't know. It depends on the person and the moment in time that you're feeling it and how attached you are to the vibration of, oh, it's never going to happen. Because if you're willing to let that go, what comes in instead is the possibility, the answer, the solution, the harmonizing, the portal of 8-8. Eight, eight. Well, first, let me, let me back up because I'm so excited. I have... Uh, it's been three days of constant downloads. I downloaded so much information the other day, transmissions uh, for my husband, for myself, for the planet, for clients. It was, wow. I slept for two hours. Um, I don't even remember what day, Dean. Was it Saturday? And then I was so groggy, and then I went to bed at 9 and slept and then woke up like, what the heck is happening there's been so much vibrational, I don't want to call it staccato, but there's just like an influx. There's so much going on. Let me just check in. <sighs> Take a breather. I've already been talking for six minutes and 23 seconds, and I, I feel like I haven't gotten to anything. Okay. Hey, Elizabeth's here. Leanna, hi. Hey, peeps, come say hello to me. And if you're new to me, please understand that when I talk about astrology, uh, I'm not talking about a thing separate from you. I'm not talking about something that um, does something to you. I'm talking about the integral relationship you have to what the planets represent. When they do something in the heavens, all right, when they create a vibration, you feel that. Just like when the sun comes up, you're like, oh, I think it's time to get up. You know, it has to do with your circadian rhythm, your whole your circadian rhythms. So without the sun, of course, we'd freeze. Um, and without the moon, we'd tumble out of orbit and drown in tsunamis. So we have this relationship to the sun and the moon. Now with the planets, and when certain configurations happen, like you hear me talk about lunar and solar eclipses, we're still in the energy of the uh, the sandwich, the Sagittarius, the Cancer, and the Capricorn eclipses we just had in July and June. And, and we're also now gearing up toward uh, Uranus, the planet that represents freedom from restriction in the sign of Taurus, stability, and values. This whole week might feel like um, astrologer Molly McCord, I think it was, or, or was it someone else, calls it a zap. It's like, zzz, zzz. and so what does that mean for you? What does it mean? The Lions Gate portal, uh, 8-8, Oct um, October, August 8th. <laughs> the, the star Sirius, now we're going to get serious, okay. The star Sirius um, is the brightest star from our vantage point on the earth. Be put. People will say it's Polaris, but that's not true. Sirius is brighter. Polaris is the North Star, so we can create a navigational system. But Sirius is like the spiritual sun, the central sun. It is so bright that literally, if it were our sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars would be swallowed whole. That's how big Sirius is. And it represents the thinning of the veils and the borders between all constellations and all worlds, seen and unseen. So this is when suddenly, you know, you're here, you're doing your thing, la, 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 and then suddenly, whoa, something else appears. You might start seeing things. You might start having very vivid dreams. You might start um, emoting things that you haven't for years. Like, I remember when I was 12. You know, so whatever starts to come out, let it. Because, well, let me just show you the images, okay? And I have many. 
So let's have like a little astronomy lesson. First of all, boop, 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 here, uh, Sirius is the biggest and brightest star in the dog star, also known as uh, Canis Major. And we can see its relationship to where it is in our galaxy. Uh, see, there's Gemini, there's Taurus, there's Orion. And if you see, I'm going to make this a little bigger. Uh, you see the, the three stars in the center. They draw a straight line. I have to do this backwards. They draw a straight line to Sirius. Uh, that's Betelgeuse. We're going to have a conversation about Betelgeuse because it is poof, diminishing in size. Poof, it's getting ready for supernova. <gasps> now that creates the pillars. The two stars here and the two stars here in Orion create the, um, the gateway pillar for many constellations and uh, friends from different places to come visit us. Um, anyway, so that's where you can see Sirius is in the uh, the constellation, the dog star constellation. Okay, so I'm just going to move that up, make it a little bit smaller. And now we have yet more visual aid. Okay, okay, this is fun. Wait a minute, let's get Orion in the picture here. Okay, there's Orion's belt. There's Betelgeuse way up at the top. There's uh, Rigel, uh, Sylph, and anyway, we'll talk about that another time. But it points a straight line. I'm out of frame here, but you'll, it goes a straight line to Sirius, the dog star. And as Sirius lines up with, you'll see it in Egypt for thousands of years, it lines up with the pyramids. So they technically built pyramids, celestial uh, entities uh, assisted in the process, but created um, portals for people to gather and receive the transmission. So let me just kind of, I know it sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? Um, and then, hang on a minute, there it is, the portal. The portal, uh, you can see, embodies, um, well, represented here by blue and orange, reddish. So the different dimensions that exist uh, whether it be hot or cold, male or female, all of these are dispelled because at the central point, it's all light. It's all light. Now, if we were to flip this on its side, it becomes the number eight. Eight, eight, August 8th, the portal. And the veil is the thinnest between, I would say, some people say July 26th through August 12th. Uh, other people who actually have Leo in their charts, I did, uh, will feel it more. So, uh, and that could last through the 14th uh, through the 18th of August. I did a reading for a client yesterday who has a Saturn in Leo and at um, 16 degrees. So Sirius is 14 degrees. It's a fixed star, 14 degrees, 56 minutes. And on August 8th, the sun will be at 16 degrees of Leo. So this alignment that happens brings up in you, but let's talk practical now, not just what the, it's a pretty image. I'm just going to make it a little smaller. Uh-oh, no, that's not it. Uh, that's it. So I'm going to make it a little smaller. Okay. So we have this as a reminder. We are looking at this uh, figure eight. Now in numerology, the eight represents in the mundane world, a big business, uh, understanding finances, the flow of abundance. Um, but let's raise that level of vibration because not everything is about money. Okay. We'd love it to be. But uh, abundance comes in many forms, and it can be a realization that you are more than you think you are. Drop the mic. That's it. It's about power. So if you feel powerless or have felt powerless in your life at any point in time, uh, hello, who hasn't? Raise your hand if you have not, because I want to know what planet you're from, because you're not from Earth. <laughs> if you have felt powerless at any point in time, 
I want you to realize that now is when, now, this week, if you're watching this in a replay, it will come back around every August. But now we are, August 3rd is today, 2020. And, but this information is evergreen because you can always work toward it, uh, meditate with it. The idea that as you, and I'm going to move this over and just to demonstrate something here. As you move from one part of your consciousness to another part of your consciousness, I'm trying to do this in a, not a backwards way because it's backwards, it's mirrored and upside down. You will reach the center and the pinnacle and that point in time is when you have absorbed enough information to then realize you are not what you think you are. Does that make sense? You are more than you think you are. You are not defined by the traumas in your past. How many years are we going to talk about? And then she left me and I was just... We have to start letting go of the words, the feelings, and the vibrations that we have identified with in order to embrace what's coming, what is present, what is more powerful. And it's not so much coming from the outside world as it is already embedded in your DNA. This is an activation. So it's already in you. What do you want to do with it? Let me just check in and say, hello, come join me. I know I get, I get a little carried away and I start talking about uh, stuff when people are trying to apply it. If you're new to the concepts of conscious awareness and letting go of poverty consciousness, then that means um, this might sound like science fiction. What it also can sound like is hope that there's a way out, that there's a ladder. Hey, Deb here, uh, Deb here, Deb here, Deb's here. Gallet, good morning, just joined, hope you didn't miss too much. I don't know. You can always start over. That's life. <laughs> because um, what time is it? It's now. Oh, wait, hang on, wait a second. No, it's now. Wait, no, just, it's now. You always have a chance to start over. Hi, Vicky. So ready for this lion's gate. Now, if you don't have your chart handy, or if you don't have a chart, you can get a free chart. Dean um, is making his lunch, but he's going to post a link so you can get your chart. Uh, one email per chart, and you must fill in all the fields. Uh, so, and if you have trouble with that, just email us at support at astrologymojo.com. So that'll pop up in a second. So um, the Lion's Gate portal can be accessed by recognizing that if you have a sudden extreme feeling or impulse that um, you have the ability to choose what to do with that feeling. It's about response not reactionaryism. How about <laughs> are those actual words? I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. If you're just joining us, I just came from three days of constant downloads where I was so exhausted I could barely lift my head. My husband will attest to that. And um, uh, downloading information, 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 and then upgrading my vibration. So don't be surprised if in the next 15, 18 days, or you've been this way already, that you're exhausted, that your sleep patterns are interrupted, that you're wide awake at midnight, but then you have to sleep at three o'clock in the afternoon. Or... Um, there's a disruption in the field, in the force. <laughs> and when you start to, to feel the alignment that happens at this gateway, at this portal, you might be riding a wave that, oh, 
you wish you had that all the time. But you can't. You're assimilating. Your DNA is altering. Now, there is going to be, okay, I want you to understand that what I say now is not um, a judgment, a prophecy, a uh, anything other than how it's viewed in the metaphysical realm. If a body has been weakened over time by trauma, by, rele by refusal to uh, release the trauma and resistant to release the trauma, stubborn attitudes, lower vibration, uh, harm, misuse of power, or uh, so stuck in the victim spiral that the body is already debilitated. Many people, we're seeing it now with the coronavirus, but it, if it weren't the coronavirus, it would just be a wave of something else. Many people will be leaving. Now, that's not to scare you. It's not to say you're going anywhere. It's to say that if you're suddenly feeling exhausted and you keep pushing through to get the job done or answer those emails or binge watch your favorite TV show, how about you rest? Let's find the drift. That's what it came to me as the other day. Uh, like the kaiju is in the drift. <laughs> Pacific Rim. But it, it is this sense of, um, I don't know if you can see this because we have green screen, but this is a fluorite stone of mine. And in it, there are purple rainbows. There's, there are inclusions. And there's so many different facets to this stone just like you, that when this activation gets to its, its peak intensity on August 8th around the world, you can do a meditation on being the healthiest, but then suddenly you feel the sickest, the most tired, the most drained, uh, wondering why uh, you were just diagnosed with whatever. Or you know, oh, that tooth, my shoulder, my hair, what's happening? My fingers, my teeth. You know, it's like the whole body is vibrating now at a high frequency. So if you've not been taking care of yourself, now is the time to really start. And that means the basics, people. When you're thirsty, clean water. When you're tired, rest. That's where the drift opens up and you can access the codes. The codes are transmission vibrations. It's, it's a transmission of vibrational healing so that you start to, uh, 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 you know, whatever. It reminds me of <laughs> in, in Finding Dory, in Finding Dory, no, uh, Finding Nemo, not the, not the second one, but the first one in Finding Nemo, you know, when the dentist's uh, daughter comes in and she sees the fish, wake up fishy, wake up fishy, wake up fishy. It can feel like that. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be struck by lightning. <laughs> um, I've been struck by lightning seven times. Benjamin Button. Um, but it's going to feel like you're struck by lightning. For some of you. Especially if you have Leo in your chart. As I said, when I was talking to a client yesterday who has a Saturn in Leo... Um, I look at what the planet represents. Saturn represents authority and karma. And I said, are you ready to take back your authority? And or you're about to face someone who scares the crap out of you. And they said, oh, my. God. On August 12th or 13th, I have to face a colleague who is mean and nasty and argumentative. And I was like, OK, let's prepare. Because this is your portal. This is your chance to, to erase the, the, the lineage of trauma that has to do with power and authority. So wherever you feel powerless in life, now is when those issues begin to come up. Does that make sense? I almost tried to use this as my mouse. <laughs> and it wasn't working. Okay, so I'm just going to um, just like make that a little smaller and let's put it in the window in Jane's window. I wonder if I could angle it. 
No, it's not turning sideways. Can I? No. Mm -mm. Anyway, I want to check in and say hello. And then when Dean is done uh, with his lunch, he's going to post a link so you can get your chart for free. Okay. So Gallet says, ha, star, star over. It's now. No, it's now. <laughs> it's true. Right. Uh, Shelby's here. Wide awake at 2 a.m. We should call each other and chat. <laughs> Although lately, as I said, the download transmissions have been so intense that I'm, I'm feeling drugged. Drugged in the morning. Okay. Um, so uh, I, this is what I want you to do in order to work with this vibe and this energy. I would like you to make a mental but written. Come on, let's be serious about this. Let's get serious. <laughs> Wait a minute. There it is. Serious. We're getting serious <laughs> about this. <laughs> that wherever you have felt powerless or still feel powerless, you still have an attachment to the victim's voice. Now, that's no judgment and it's no fault of your own. It is part of the karmic progression. We don't just say, oh yeah, I want to be awake and pff, it's done. Bye. We don't do that. Uh, we come here on purpose to have an experience, to have many experiences. And one of them is the fullness of taste, touch, sound. We love the vibration of things that feel good, hugs, happiness, orgasms. You know, it's like chocolate in the winter. Oh my gosh, chocolate in the summer, chocolate in the autumn. You know, so at, at any point when you have that sense of, I don't have any power, I don't have any control, that's where I want you to go. Because at the center of that, you know, on one side, let's look at the red heated up anger frustration, anxiety, doubt, what trauma? Why do you keep repeating the same thing over and over again? It's because you're attached to it, not consciously. That's why I started off early. And the, one of the easiest things to talk about is relationships uh, <clears throat> to anything. Your relationship to food, your relationship, you know, well, let's just talk about that. Your relationship to food. How did it begin? I was a colic baby, they called it. My mother had to make formula that never went through the bottle. So I was starving all the time. No surprise that by the time I'm 15 years old, I become a chronic dieter. Starving all the time. What am I starving from or for? What am I starving about? What's the starvation? So I would look at that as a place of power when I worked on my body and say, okay, that's an entry point. That's that's a, that's a point right there. Okay, my loss of power comes when I'm hungry and I deny myself food or I overeat or I'm eating the wrong foods at the wrong times or I don't stop eating, right? And so many people can relate to this. And then when I have an emotional trigger, somebody hurts my feelings, um, I didn't get the job I wanted 30 years ago, whatever, I would just start eating or I would starve myself, right? So the, the line, the wave that goes through any pattern issue that you have is now going to relate to your thinking that you have a lack of power. Does that make sense? I just want to check in, see everybody hears me, you understand <clears throat> so the vibration is not going to so much be an external thing like a stream of light, like, oh, I see the light. It's going to be in your DNA. It's going to activate your cellular level. It's going to activate your mind body. And then the spirit says, been waiting. Can we talk now? I've been waiting. So what is it that you would like to, to accomplish? Now, some people say, I want to get a job. I want to make more money. Okay, great. Some others uh, are saying, I want to feel empowered. Uh, I want to become a freelancer instead of an hourly wage earner. Uh, I would like to heal my body. I would like to um, not feel judgmental and angry when I turn on the news. Turn off the news. Or <laughs> there's a solution. Um, it doesn't mean you're hiding your head in the sand. It just means that you're not giving power to, right? Oh, what are you giving power to? 
To what do you give power? That's what Jane would say. I'm in Jane Austen's pretend office, not really. The Lion Gate portal is not a thing that's going to happen to you. It is you opening to what is already existing, but it's like the sun rising. As it comes around once a year, it's like the sun rising in your body. And you say, oh, illuminated. What have I been waiting for? Them? Him? Her? Me? It? Waiting for Godot. What are you waiting for? And this feeling of, it's like an injection of power. But where do you want to put it? Because you have to be able to physically house it. When you're thirsty, you drink water, clean, clear water. Add some trace minerals. Check with your doctor. Know what's good for you. Vibe it out. It was very specific, the transmission that came through me the other day. Um, not just for my husband and his business, but for me, my clients that I was working with this, this month, that I was to have 76 ounces of clean water by 1 p.m. every day. Okay, so I started it immediately. Wow. Yeah, it helped. It helped my entire body. It helped my mind. It's like something that simple. So when you're thirsty, you're going to drink water and, you know, some whatever vitamins to go with it. When you're tired, you're going to rest. And when you rest, it doesn't mean you have to necessarily nap. It just means rest the mind, rest the machine, the body. Maybe needs 10 minutes to lie down and just be quiet and still. then that opens up in your DNA. And you're going to clear. So many people are going to be clearing so many things so fast. You're not going to be able to journal. <laughs> Wait a minute, that was a, no, then there was the, then I was 12. And then it was another life. And it's like, just let it go. Let it go. Because once you do, then the other side opens up. This is when the, the veils are the thinnest between worlds. So passed on loved ones, the, um, your star seed, your tribe, the angelic realm, the mantis realm, Syrian, Lyran, Orion, uh, Pegasi, and all the realms are, are available. It's like you walk to a library and you only see one door and one door takes you to one section. And you've been going through that same door for however many years or lifetimes. Now all the doors are going to open and you're going to pick and choose and go, okay, I'll take some physical healing from the Arcturians. I'll take some, uh, you know, a little bit of extra love <laughs> from the people who passed on that I miss. I'll take a little bit of this. So whatever can come through and then activate will. Now, we're not going to force anything. You can't sit and go, you know, like uh, Master Sifu, by the way, Sifu is Chinese for master. So master, master in uh, Kung Fu Panda, right? It's like inner peace, mm, inner peace, mm, inner peace. <laughs> but he was filled with turmoil and anxiety because he, he let go of his power and he gave it over to Tai Lung. Do we understand where are you giving your power? What are you giving your power to? Whom? To whom are you giving your power and why? Because if you can just grasp onto the ring of one side of the figure eight, the eight represents not only embodying what the frequency of abundance is, which you are already, but it's activating it so that you can turn to someone else and say, that's okay. Let me help. Or, hey, thanks for the help. I accept. Do we understand? Do we understand one another? Yeah, right? Any questions on that? Anybody? Anybody? Ferris Bueller. <laughs> it's quite exciting because 
you know, I don't know what comedian said this once, but uh, something like, you don't think we're the last hope of the universe, do you? <laughs> Earthlings, <laughs> we are not. Uh -huh. We are being raised. We're being raised in our vibration so that we can understand we are more than what we think we are. So how, how is, what's a great way to activate this power? Well, the very next time you feel really tired, you're going to what? You're going to rest. You're going to get into the drift. And that drift is when you stop thinking about all the things you have to do from 10 minutes onward. Next week, next year, next month, I got this to get. Uh, uh. You're going you're gonna to bring it back to the present moment. Present moment, present moment. When you're hungry, you're going to eat nutritional food. You have to keep the biology upgraded. Just like a computer, you wouldn't put, you wouldn't take a Commodore 64 computer and try to put a brand new application into it. It just won't drive. There's the language is incoherent. It wouldn't work. So you got to upgrade the biology right now. And everyone is being asked to do that by not committing to fear of propaganda, but by knowing intuitively that's okay for me. That's not okay for me. I don't like when you speak to me like that. Lower your voice. There's other ways to communicate. Setting boundaries is very important during this time. Really important. Again, Dean posted. Let me look. Yes, he did. So thank you, Dean. I love you so much. And by the way, he's an Aquarius moon, and we have an Aquarius full moon this week. It's tonight, but yesterday, today, tomorrow, it's like zzz, zzz. So some of you may be feeling so tired. Some may be feeling so inspired. And some are thinking, how else can I get that done? How else can I activate that? Now, for the people who get confused, they're drawn toward technology. It's, I'm just going to turn on my tablet and uh, look for, you know, cats that look like Hitler. Or, uh, you know, baby otters who talk to one another. And so you can't stop, you know, one video after the next, after the next. You just can't stop watching because you're looking for a place to put this electrical energy. And that's okay to do because I'll wake up in the morning and I'll, I'll say, okay, it's time to meditate. And instead I'm drawn to, um, you know, three minutes of comedy or impressions. I love impersonators. Well, no, that, that sounded weird. I don't love people who impersonate like, you know, dignitaries or, but you know what I'm talking about, comics. <laughs> So I start the morning off laughing or watching baby animals because they're so cute. <laughs> no cry. And they make me so happy. You make me so very happy. <sighs> I'm going to pull a card for everyone. And then I'm going to um, look at all the notes my husband helped me to transcribe. The other day, I want to pull a card, but let's see. Oh, I know who's calling my name. I got a cute little kitchen organizer box, and I put all my cards and my runes in there. And, of course, they're all in front of me on my desk, so I feel so very organized. Now, there's power in organization, people. So no matter what it is you're attempting to do right now, Organize your kitchen cabinets, uh, organize uh, work practices, organize your kids, organize your thoughts, find your power in feeling healthier, feeling more alive. If you cannot sleep, what I'd like you to do, if you're not in a place that's too crowded, busy, or whatever, go outside at night and look up and look up. Wait a minute. Let me move that one forward. Let me see if I can get that one up there. No, I'm going to get rid of that one. Yeah. And let's get rid of that one. Okay, if you can see Orion's belt and um, just follow the belt on an angle, you'll find Sirius. Now, it may be above or below the horizon, depending on where you live in the world and what time of day or night it is, but especially at night. If you cannot sleep, go outside. My husband and I have been a little antsy lately, but exhausted, working really hard and like, oh, tired. 
fidgety, um, sensitive, talking about the past a lot. And then we go outside with our binoculars and we look up and we go, oh, look, there's a friendly. Woo! Now, an airplane will blink uh, red and green light and leave a condensation trail. But friendlies don't. And if you get, I don't have my phone with me, but I have Sky Safari. It's an app you can download into your phone, turn on your GPS, um, activate with a number eight sideways. It magnetizes into your phone. And then you can find out, you look at your phone and the application shows you where constellations and planets are and go outside and look up. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to shut that off. Where is that? Oh my gosh, what did I call it? Mama. There we go. <laughs> Are we still together? Are we still here? Are we here? Hello. Come say hello to me. So um, sometimes the energy, and people have asked me, is there something I can listen to? Well, um, my Bodhi brainstorm, um, we have meditations. I'm going to find out where all the links are and we can, I can post that here in Facebook. I want you to be able to find a resonance, a music, uh, a tone, a frequency, something that helps you to calm down during moments of uncertainty, doubt, that feeling of overwhelm, sudden anything, sudden extreme, anger, uh, anxiety, um, inability to uh, stay on track with one thought. Okay, Fehu has come to visit. Now, uh, hang on, let me just grab the book. Oh, good, Gallet says still here. Fantastic. I'm going to read from the Book of Runes. Fulfillment. F for fulfillment. Fehu. Nourishment from the sacred and the divine. A deep probing of the meaning of profit and gain in your life. That's very powerful. Look with care to know whether it is wealth and possessions you require for your well-being or rather self-rule and the growth of a will. That's what I'm talking about. Inner power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fehu. And then share it. You can have. You can have. There's no, there ought not be guilt around having. Sharing is where the guilt starts. Oh, I have too much. Uh, I, I should have more. How come they have more than I do? How come I don't have? How what? So we have to look at that too. Making sense, I hope so. All right. Um, I've got the die. Baby, baby, I got the feeling now. I'm also wanting to pull... Um, Alana Fairchild has oh, Andrew Gonzalez. His work is so amazing. It's so, it connects me to all my people in all the constellations. So I'm wanting to pull that. Let me do that first. Let me mix that up. Okay, so let me ask you, unless you're watching this in a replay or on YouTube in a replay. Let me ask you, what, where do you feel powerless in your life right now? Where? Where do you feel powerless? Is it in relationships? Now remember relationships, you have a relationship to health, to money, to food, your body, to people, to business, to your power, right? Where are you feeling the lack of power in your life right now? This card wants to come out. Garuda, it's a Garuda. There's going to be a big message here with the Garuda. So let me know, and maybe I can help address that. 
Where do you feel a lack of power in your life right now? Then we can tie it into the portal and what's opening and what you can focus on. 42. Garuda. This is what Garuda says. Cultivate confidence in yourself. You have the inner spiritual power to deal wisely and effectively with any situation. Don't allow anyone to take advantage of your kind nature. Reflect upon what action feels best for you and take it. And then follow through with decisiveness. Do not allow negativity to get a grip in your life. Positive energy and outcomes are indicated. So, uh, oh, let me show you. The Garuda is an eagle. Um, by its nature alone, Garuda, the eagle, seeks the highest perch for the best vantage point and has that sense of um, freedom through flight. So if a situation happens in your life right now and you get really upset about it, absolutely feel your feelings then I want you to stop and ask yourself, when is the last time I felt this way? When is the last time I felt this way? And if it was yesterday, this morning, last week, last month, okay, you're being given a message to pay attention to letting go, letting go of where you think um, you don't have power. So that you want to flop it, turn it around, and ask yourself, okay, if the situation were different and I didn't feel this way, what would I be feeling? Question mark. If I didn't feel powerless, what would I be feeling? Now, I'm not saying, you know, oh yeah, powerful. Well, what would you be feeling? Encouraged, um, vindicated, validated, healthy. What would you be feeling? Like, name it. So let me just check in. So Gallat says self-worth and boundaries. Okay, um, well, first, they work together in a figure eight, in an infinity sign, because self-worth uh, equals having boundaries, and when you start to set boundaries, your self-worth increases. So utilizing this, and you're not alone, believe me, <laughs> but utilizing this particular portal um, is telling yourself and giving yourself permission to say no. No doesn't mean I hate you, you're stupid, you're fat, you're ugly. No means no thank you. No means I'll think about it. But no for now. Make sense? Um, Deb says strong and confident. Feeling powerless ab about being strong and confident? Confidence comes from trusting so if you looked at all the people you don't trust, all the things you don't trust, you start to see a pattern because sucker punches, uh, betrayals, um, uh, false assuredness, being, being lured by, oh, they were kind to me for one day in 50. That must mean that they care, right? So, um, but that gets knocked down when you don't get what you want, when your intuition is off and that's not really intuition. It's, it's more of the mind trying to see the pattern. So if you're not feeling confident and you don't feel strong because you don't feel confident, then what's the opposite? W what is the one moment in time you actually felt confident and not just Deb, but anyone who has this issue? When is that time you actually felt confident? Like, and it didn't have to be over something huge, like I won an award when I was 27. It could be, I woke up one day and I just felt like, yeah, this is going to be a great day. And then the moment that you go, hang on, let me support it with a visual. <laughs> the moment you go from confidence yeah, to not being confident is what 
what moment you're going to say they did that, this thing happened out there, all these external factors that triggered you, that leaves you feeling powerless. You're not powerless. You have the ability to change your mind, to change your thoughts. Sometimes it takes, you know, you got to pull up your bootstraps and go, if I don't stop this spiral right now, nothing changes. So the struggle comes with, with resistance on the inside by not trusting. I don't trust that it's going to work. I don't trust that I'm going to get what I need. I don't trust in a universe that provides. I don't trust in them. I don't trust in myself. I don't. So you have to ask yourself, what's the opposite of that? What do you trust? When is that one moment you felt trust? When you felt confident? Because as this portal arises, see the center? That's what you are. That's what you are. You already are that. Isn't that exciting? That you are what you are, but then you, you go to one side and then you go to the other side. And it's like, I don't know, I vacillate. Maybe I'm not that. Because if I were that, how come they're doing that? If I were so great, so wonderful, so lovable, so worthy, so happy, how come they did that to me? Or how come I didn't get what I wanted? Again, you're putting your, your thoughts out and you give your power away when you do that. If somebody else is having a crap day and they hurl at you, it's not because you deserved it unless you stepped on their toes on purpose or inadvertently. Either way, you're going to find out. And how do you know? By trusting your own intuition, your own experience by saying, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, you, you must be having a bad day. Can I help you? So that takes it out of personal and puts it back into a mirror. You are not doing so great. I would love to help if I can. If not, I'm just going to be over there. And then you don't take it personally. And it doesn't feed the victim any longer. Make sense? Does this make sense? So come and tell me before we close for the day. Uh, and I will be back. When? Tell me when, Thursday, the 6th, I will be back. Oh, my, because we're going to get closer to the portal. I'm going to talk more about uh, the 8-8 eight, eight Lion's Gate. Hey, that rhymes. And the things that you're putting into your system, not just food, but thoughts. The things that you regurgitate that give you indigestion, emotional indigestion and congestion and constipation. Um, you know, watching what certain people, politicians, uh, healthcare providers, uh, whatever, are doing takes the focus off of you. How do we make, how do we make a better world? Because that's what the lion's gate is showing us. That's what our opportunity is to, to, to absorb the frequency that raises the level of your cellular structure. So you purge the crap and you stop the spiral downward. H how do you do that? One moment at a time. That's the only way you can do it in a physical form. That's the only way. <laughs> and and so if you need to literally lie down because, oh, you know, the world is too much, then you lie down. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to mix up a cup. Oh. Wow. Hang on. Something just flew out of the deck. Whom I don't know if this is for a person or the collective, but uh, okay, Deb says makes sense. Thanks. Good. I'm so glad. Listen, I'm looking to expand my reach, so I would so appreciate if you would share my videos with your friends, if you would comment, if you would go to my YouTube channel, uh, Elaine Marilaka Settleson, Astrology Mojo, and comment there and like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Okay, so a swords cup just plopped out. 
and um, I want to see what it has to do with. Uh, the Nine of Swords. By the way, this is the Ciro Marchetti deck, Legacy. Despair, loss, suffering, doubt, questioning, pity, burden. It's the tortured thoughts we think over and over and over again that don't get us out of the maze, the mind maze, but, but suck us in deeper, further to a place that is not the truth. If you're lying awake at night, going over that conversation you wish you had, you did had, it wasn't enough, it's never enough, they aren't enough, you're not enough, it's not enough. Enough! Enough! Uh, astrologically, this uh, the Nine of Swords deals with the um, uh, Mars and Gemini. And, and Mars and Gemini is is about, okay, Mars is action, represents action. Gemini is thought-filled, but also needs to talk. So if you need to talk to someone right now, uh, a friend, a counselor, a psychologist, booking a reading with me, you need to talk to someone right now to help give you perspective so you can get out of the loop and the spiral. Now's the time. Because with, <laughs> with the lion's gate... 8-8, eight, eight, um, the 8 vibration is huge. And it means you, you can expand on something so powerful. That's not a word, powerful. That you can help not just yourself, but believe this when I tell you because I've done this. But you can help end the cycle from the bloodline. So whatever has been going on in the past, it becomes the pattern that continues to the future. So, but it can stop now with you. Whatever that bloodline trauma has been, you were told you couldn't do it. You were abused. Uh, they were, because they were abused, because they were abused, because they were abused, right? So whatever the trauma is, now you can end it. And so the nine of swords, nine, is the ending of something. Swords is um, a mental energy. So let's look at cutting the ties to those things that have kept us in a downward spiral, feeling burdened and heavy, constantly talking about it, constantly talking about it, but not doing anything about it. You know, the downfall of too much talk therapy is that you don't actually do anything. Sometimes you need to have the conversation. You need to, you know, get it out of your body. Um, but then comes the bridge to the next step. The portal is here. I'll see you inside. Does that make sense? Casey says, just got here. It's now. When is it? Wait, hang on. It's no wait. It's now. Perfect timing. So you can listen uh, in the replay. And I will be back on Thursday uh, to talk about it because the 8-8 portal is in play already. We're going to be feeling it. You might have the most brilliant ideas because you have been focused on your inner power and what you can grasp creatively, intuitively, uh, physically, you're, you're healing, you're motivated, you're inspired, but, oh, and I started to say this earlier, but I, I, um, I interrupted myself as usual, that you can be so inspired that you turn around and you sound like a maniac to your friends and family, or you sound like a dictator. And yeah, that's not going to work either. You see the extremes? We don't want extremes. We want the center point of power. What's the point of power in you? By acknowledging that you are a spiritual being that is having an earthly experience. And sometimes it's dark here and it's hot, sweaty, scary, doubtful, uncomfortable. But you're not alone. And you have power. You have power. Ultimate power. Make sense? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, I'm so happy you are here today to join me. Uh, I will be back, Elaine Maralakis Edelson. Please remember to comment, to share, and to be sparkly. As always, I wish you peace, and I will be back on Thursday. <laughs>